Howdy everyone, Fusion here. So, as more and more mods start coming out for Farming Simulator 22, now is really going to be a key time to keep yourself organized. Um, server admins may be faster or slower to update mods. You may have uh, particular themes that you want to go for uh, in each of your Let's Plays or series. Um, and to keep things more organized, uh, it's better to separate your mods into distinct folders instead of having them all lumped into one big giant folder. So if we look at the game by default, we go to our FS22 folder. We go to game settings XML. And you can see by default, the directory is just the default which is your mods folder, as you probably are aware. Well, there is a very handy little tool that was previously known as PV Tools. Uh, if you're familiar with PV Tools, then this, uh, this new tool, new version is uh, pretty much exactly the same. Um, but this tool really, really helps you keep your mods separated. Um, like I said, if you have the same mod on two different ad, uh, MP servers and one of them updates it and the other one doesn't and you decide to update yours and you're just having it all on the base default mod folder, then you're not going to be able to connect to that other server until that server admin goes in and updates that mod. What this, what this allows you to do is to update it on your server one and keep it non-updated on server two and you're free to go. Like I said, when you want to run different kinds of series, uh, like a old equipment versus new equipment on different maps, and you don't want to have all the new equipment in your old playthrough and all the old equipment in your new playthrough, this makes it so much better. So, like I said, PV Tools was the old iteration. It is now referred to as SGA, MFS, or Mod Folder Switcher. Um, so this was the Dajnet, the same guy who did PV tools. Um, I've rebranded it, rebadged it. So I'll drop this link down in the description below, but you'll come here. Uh, you will need to register, uh, at the time of this recording anyway. Um, once you, though, you'll see a little registration button here. Um, once you register, confirm your email, then you will have a download button. Once you have downloaded it you will have a zip file. I just came out here and said extract to, and then it just dumped it here. And then you'll run the setup. Once the setup is done, mod folder switcher, and here's your screen. So your different options, you can just Say, hey, let's just use the default folder. Um, if you want to use that as your as your default, that's fine. Um, and then you have all these other options for adding new folders. Um, so what I've already set up one, so we'll go through the process of setting up a new one. So we say select folder. And then you say change folder. So I've created one on my desktop that will have everything. So I will set up a new one for No Man's Land. And I'll give it a name on the button. And we'll set a color. Doesn't really matter. So that's the button color and then the text color. There you go. Uh, this copy mods from fave folder. Um, it doesn't appear to be um, in this current uh, 1.0 iteration of this program. Um, if you were familiar with EV tools, then uh, it basically allowed you to create a folder where you put uh, all of your most favorite mods. And then when you wanted to copy them over like GPS, store deliveries, um, any of the realism mods that you really liked, you could just say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up this new play where I'm only using old equipment, but I want to have some of these other favorite things you can just hit the copy from faves and it dumps it into your uh, folder that you are creating here and that way you don't have to manually copy it over so once we're done click here when finished 
If you don't like what you did, you can always click here to cancel. So there we go. And then we'll set up one more for this. Pinewood. This is a new map that I found that I'm going to be checking out. So that's why I have this. And I'm just going to leave this one alone. It's fine. Next color, uh, white. There we go. Oh, I messed it up. Redo that. Wrong way. There we go. And done. Okay. So now if I come out to that folder, you will see. Oops. So I've got this handful of mods for the Farm Sim Guy multiplayer server. And I've got just a few different ones in the No Man's Land. And then just the map in this one. Um, there is one other thing I did want to demonstrate that I just realized I didn't do multi fruit buying station. So multi fruit buying station has been updated, but we have not updated it on the farm sim guy server. So we will demonstrate that, uh, how, how this can help save you from headache of updating it on one server, but then not being able to get into the other because the other one isn't. Um, it really helps. Okay. So now we're going to hop into the game and we will go to first to no man's land. Let me just make sure that I put that in the right spot. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go into no man's land and you can see once you pick your, your, um, folder selection, once you make your folder selection, you can see at the bottom, it's telling you, uh, where you're pointing. And quickly, if we come back to your documents, my games, FS22, and you come back to the game settings XML, it's been changed, reload, yes, and now it's showing that the directory is going to be here. Let's get in the game. Okay, we're in the game. Now, I selected No Man's Land from my mod folder switcher. So if I come in here, I'm going to have the standard Elm Creek, Hobeleron, Elengrat, and No Man's Land. So before I do that, we're going to back out. We're going to go to Mod Hub. And we're going to go and we're going to say Update. Okay, so I got the multi buy station updated. And it is running version 1.0.1.0. So I can start. Everything is the same. So now I'm in the game. And if I come into brands. And I bring up Deutzfar. You can see I've got the Deutzfar 16006. And then all the other baseline stuff. Uh, if I go to construction, of course, I've got the multi fruit container. Yep, it's all there. Everything's fine. Okay, we're going to hop out and we're going to go over to the FSG multiplayer. And because I did not update that version of the mod, because I only updated the mod that was within the No Man's Land mod folder, then I should still be able to join without any issues. So we're going to take care of that super quick. Okay, so we've shut the game down. We're going to change to the FSG MP folder selection. We're going to start up the game. Now we're going to select the FSG multiplayer. And you can see if I hit space to see the details, the multi fruit buying station is 1.0.0.0. No issues because I did not update that version. So there you go. Said if you have a 
couple different servers that you play on and the admins are slower or faster to update stuff uh, or maybe purposely aren't updating something, um, then you can be assured that you can update each server respectively and not run into any, into any issues. Uh, similarly, if you want to run different things on different servers and not have all this stuff available on one versus the other, that's a great way to uh, narrow down your mod list um, to just what you need. Okay, we're going to do one more. Uh, I tried the pine wood and the map would not actually show up. So we will move on to another one that I have been looking at uh, getting in and taking a look at the early access on, and that is Yukon River Valley for FS22. So we're going to fire up the game now. Okay, we've got the game fired up. I'm going through career. Of course, I've got the standard maps. And now I also have Yukon River Valley. So you can see one advantage too is, uh, especially if you are playing a lot of different maps, instead of having to scroll and scroll and scroll on that screen to find the map you want, you know that you'll only get the base game maps plus the one extra mod, uh, the one mod map, I should say. And you saw on that selection screen for mods that I only had the ones that came with the map. I didn't have any of the other ones that we were looking at earlier, the multi-fruit by silo, the doids far, none of that. So there you go. That is the mod folder switcher, formerly known as PV tools by Dajnet. It is a fantastic tool that, like I said, especially with more and more mods coming out, both on the mod hub, I checked the other day, there was 500 something still in testing. So they're coming uh, hard and heavy. And of course, all the third third party mod sites. Um, if you're like me from FS19, you had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mods. Um, some you used and then never touched again. Um, and then forgot to delete them. <laughs> so this will help keep some of your stuff organized, uh, make it far easier when you are doing your Let's Plays and not having to trudge through the endless, endless amounts of mods that you have to find the one thing that you want because um, you don't need any of the other stuff because it doesn't fit your Let's Play. So let's do a recap very quickly. So to recap, you again, you come to the Sim Game Alliance site. I will provide a link in the description below. You'll need to register. Again, at the time of this recording, you'll have to register to get the download. When you are not registered, you'll see a no permissions to download. Grab that download, extract it to your desktop. It'll come into this folder. And then one, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. That makes it a little easier. Um, so the application has to stay with uh, with its application files. So I did a right click create shortcut and I created a shortcut on my desktop. Fire that bad boy up and I already had it open. Select your folders, all that fun stuff and you are off to the races. So there are a couple extra features that I uh, won't discuss in detail at this time, but I will make you aware of them. Um, click on the main menu. There is a server mods download option. Uh, I did try this. I think it's still a bit buggy, um, but you in theory would uh, throw in the IP address for the public mod download link. Uh, press download from URL to your current folder that you have selected here. Um, however, it uh, throws a, a critical exception pretty quick and crashes. Um, that part so it doesn't look like that's quite working yet um, and like I said there should be uh, if we make a selection here copy from fave folder uh, in the prior version there was an option in here to set your favorite folder uh, I don't see that in here um, so a few adjustments to come for that and for enabling developer controls um, you can quickly do that in here disabled or enabled so check that as you would like 
Uh, and then there's some game settings options that you can set in game or you can also do it in here. Uh, I have never actually messed with these. So play around, play around with them, see what they do. Um, but we will not discuss those any further. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that you found this useful um, and it will save you lots of headache uh, in the future from having just a mess of a mod folder. Um, please leave a like, subscribe if you have not already, and please feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or comments for future videos. Like I said, I will leave the description, I will leave the link in the description for this tool. Um, please go check out Dashnet and the Sim Gaming Alliance. And we will see you in the next one. Adios for now.